Hello, I'm Dave Mossner. Thanks for joining me on a tour of Wisconsin Lighthouses. Did you know the Badger State is home to nearly 50 lighthouses? That's right. Lake Michigan is home to most of them. There's 10 on Lake Superior, and would you believe, 6 on Lake Winnebago. The oldest light still standing is on Rock Island, which is a ferry ride north of Washington Island at the far end of Door County. The Potawatomi Lighthouse was built in 1858. No one lives in lighthouses anymore, but of the 48 lights still standing, 30 are active aids for navigation. We start in Fond du Lac. The light is a symbol of the city because of its history. During the Great Depression, a local lumberman wanted to build a lighthouse to put men to work. It was finished in 1933, rehabilitated in 1965. Lake Winnebago is 30 miles long and 10 miles across, a big body of water that seems bigger when it's a dark and stormy night. A few miles northeast of Fond du Lac is the Fisherman's Road Light, which guides recreational craft into a small harbor near a fishing club. It used to stand further north near Calumet Harbor. The Calumet Harbor Light looks different than other lighthouses. It was originally a water tower for a company in Fond du Lac, but in 1936 was turned into a tower for a light on the east side of Lake Winnebago. Continue north around the lake past Menasha and Appleton and you'll find the Nina Light, also called the Kimberly Point Light for the family that built it in 1945. Yes, that's the family you know as part of the Kimberly Clark Corporation. Head south to Oshkosh and you will see the Asylum Point Light near the Winnebago Mental Health Institute. It was built during the Great Depression in 1937 by the Works Progress Administration. But when the application was made to turn it into a functioning lighthouse, the application was rejected and it was never lit. You need to visit Oshkosh at the right time of year or have a boat to see the Bray Lighthouse. It was built in 1910 by William Bray, who owned land right on the lake and was an accomplished sailor and commodore of the local yacht club. We continue the lighthouse tour near the Illinois state line in Southport. Don't recognize the name of Southport, Wisconsin? You may know it as Kenosha, which became the official name of the state's southernmost port in 1850. The first light there was a bonfire built on the top of a 10-foot high oak tree stump in the 1830s. Eventually it was replaced in 1867 by the Kenosha Lighthouse. Its light shines out for miles, 76 feet above the water. From the tower you can see the Kenosha Pier Headlight, which helped captains into harbor. It was sold in 2012 to a local artist who turned it into a studio. It was originally built in 1906. In Racine, the breakwater light looks like a candle on sunny days. Built in 1904, it survived several moves around the harbor and now marks the entrance. The Racine Harbor Lighthouse was built in 1888, then became part of a Coast Guard station when it stopped functioning as a pierhead light on the Racine River. Racine, by the way, gets its name from the intertwined roots Native Americans found in the riverbed. English-speaking Europeans called it Root River. The French name stuck, and we know the place as Racine. North of Racine, the land juts out into the lake, forming a point which is a hazard to ships. In the late 19th century, it was also part of a very dark stretch of shoreline between Milwaukee and Racine. Built in 1880, the Wind Point Light stands 111 feet above the water. It's part of a town park now, and on occasional Saturdays in the summer, you can climb the tower. Around the same time in Milwaukee, a large breakwater was built to create a safe harbor. While money for a breakwater light was denied for years before a small light was built in 1902, it was eventually replaced in 1926 by this much stronger looking structure. On shore, not far away, stands its predecessor, the Milwaukee Pierhead Lighthouse built in 1872 as a successor to several lights before it. Its Fresnel lens was moved out to the breakwater light in 1926. The first lights on the bluff above Lake Michigan in Milwaukee were lit in 1837. This is the second version of the North Point Lighthouse built in 1888, after erosion claimed the first one. Trees hid the light just 20 years later, but ships still needed it, so the tower was made 50 feet taller. Sometimes, lighthouses are personal. This is the newest lighthouse in Wisconsin, built in 1981 by a Serbian Orthodox priest who built the 55-foot light tower as part of his home on the lake near Grafton. 
In 1848, Wisconsin became a state and the community of Port Washington received approval for a brick lighthouse on its bluff. The light and tower were taken down in 1934 when it became a home. But they were restored when the Minister of Sites and Monuments of Luxembourg visited the community in 2000, offering the town a new tower and lantern room to honor U.S. servicemen who liberated his country during World War II. It was dedicated in 2002. The Pierhead Light in Port Washington became the main guide for navigation in 1903. A second generation of it was finished in 1935. The Sheboygan Light looks unusual because its lantern room, which surrounds the light itself, is missing. The room was removed in the 1940s. The Manitowoc Breakwater Light is in the early phases of being restored to its 1919 glory. The area was identified in 1837 as a place that needed a lighthouse. The first one guided boats into the Manitowoc River two years later. Since 1897, a ferry has linked Manitowoc with Ludington, Michigan. First built for railroad cars, the SS Badger now carries tourists. In nearby Two Rivers, where the ice cream sundae was invented, by the way, Two Rivers had its own light in 1886. All that's left now is the top of the tower and the lantern room, which stands in the Rogers Street Fishing Museum. North of Two Rivers, near the Point Beach State Forest, stands the Raleigh's Point Lighthouse. It's owned by the Coast Guard and is used as a vacation home for Coast Guard families. It was built in 1894 using parts from a lighthouse that was never built in Chicago. It's the tallest light in Wisconsin on Lake Michigan, 113 feet above the water. Kiwani became a boom town in 1836 with news of gold found at the mouth of the Kiwani River. The boom busted soon after, but the town became a safe harbor between Milwaukee and Green Bay and its first light was installed in 1889. The current Pierhead light went into service in 1931. Algoma is the next light north. At the start of the 20th century, it was home to the largest commercial fishing fleet on Lake Michigan. The Algoma Pierhead light went on duty in 1932. Welcome to Door County, home to 12 lighthouses, more than any other county in the country. Sturgeon Bay is a natural body of water that nearly cuts Door County in half. The canal that finished the job was built between 1872 and 1881. At the east end of the canal stand two lights. First, the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal Pierhead Lighthouse, linked to shore with a catwalk. Built in 1903, that bright red building catches your attention. Its light and foghorn help if you can't see the building. Look back to shore from the pierhead and you see the canal lighthouse for Sturgeon Bay. Built in 1899, it continues to serve as an active Coast Guard station. The Old Bailey Harbor Light is one of only four remaining lights in the country with a birdcage style lantern room. Built in 1853, it only served ships about 20 years. Then it was out of business because it was deteriorating and not doing a very good job of guiding ships into harbor. In 1870, the Bailey's Harbor range lights were built. The rear light in the house is 36 feet above the water, the front light 21 feet. Range lights work as a team. When the captain lines up the two lights on top of each other from the wheelhouse, the captain knows the ship is on the right course. Built around the same time and perhaps the most spectacular lighthouse in Wisconsin is the Cana Island Light. It was the first lighthouse we visited. It was built in 1870. It stands 83 feet above the water. The area between the end of the peninsula and Washington Island is known to ships as Death's Door. While it is a shortcut from Lake Michigan to Green Bay instead of going all the way around Rock Island, the treacherous waters claim many a vessel. From the Washington Island Ferry, we got a long distance view of the Pilot Island Lighthouse on Gills Rock. As we got closer, we went by Plum Island, home to a pair of range lights. Only the rear light is active now. Both were built in 1897. On the Green Bay side of Door County, the Eagle Bluff Lighthouse is now part of the Peninsula Point State Park. Built in 1868, it shares a design with a number of lighthouses we saw on our trips around Lake Michigan. West of the city of Sturgeon Bay, on the south edge of its mouth onto Green Bay, stands the Sherwood Point Lighthouse in Idlewild. While quite visible from the water, approaching from land it's tough to see. Built in 1883, the active light is another Coast Guard vacation home. 
The final lights on the tour are the Grassy Island Range Lights. The range lights were built on Grassy Island near the mouth of the Fox River in 1872, but a dredging project to keep the river open for ship traffic in 1966 eliminated the island. Thanks to the Green Bay Yacht Club, they survived today, although they look very small underneath the Interstate 43 bridge. If you're interested in learning more about these lights, you can visit my blog, dwmossner.blogspot.com, then click on the Lighthouse Visits tab at the top of the page. I hope you enjoyed this trip. Thanks for joining me.